the Los Angeles Chargers, not the Buffalo Bills, not the Kansas City Chiefs, are the future of the AFC, the future of the NFL. In this video, I give you my reasoning for why I believe the Los Angeles Chargers are the team of the future in the NFL. They're contenders for 2021, but for the next decade plus, I believe the Chargers will dominate the NFL. Before I give you my thoughts on the Chargers and why they are the future of football, make sure that you do gronk spike that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos just like this. Also, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Are the Chargers the team of the future? The Los Angeles Chargers are already playing futuristic football. Through the first five weeks of the 2021 NFL season, the Chargers are 4-1. and one. They surprisingly lead the AFC West. Although, if you were a subscriber of this channel, I did tell you they were going to be the breakout team of the NFL. Just saying. The Los Angeles Chargers are on top of the AFC West. They are ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs. Way ahead. They are ahead of the Broncos and the Raiders. But the impressive part of their record is not necessarily that they've won these games. It's not necessarily that they've beat down their opponents. It's the way they've won these games. The way they've won these games thus far this season is very futuristic. What do I mean by this? They're going for it a lot. Like, I mean a lot, a lot. The Chargers so far this season have won games solely based on head coaching decisions, quarterback play, and aggressiveness, and math. And all of those things to me are the future of the NFL. Having a great head coach in Brandon Staley, who will make aggressive decisions that are plus EV, that are good for the team. Even if you fail, more than likely, this is going to lead you to more victories down the road, especially in the modern NFL and moving forward into the next decade. This is how teams need to play in the NFL to win. We are seeing this firsthand with the Chargers, that if the Chargers had Anthony Lynn, this exact roster, this exact team, this exact Justin Herbert, all of it, if Anthony Lynn was the head coach of the Chargers right now, this team would not be 4-1. and one. This team may not even be 500. The way that the Chargers have been able to win these games has been a lot to do with Brandon Staley's aggressiveness and decision making to go for it on fourth down. You can absolutely count the Chiefs win and the Browns win towards Brandon Staley making incredible decisions and Justin Herbert making the throws and making the plays for them to convert on those fourth downs. For them to be prepared for those situations to go out and execute at an enormously epic rate right now. Now, maybe they don't in some of these games, and eventually there'll be a game where, hey, they go for all these fourth downs, and they just don't execute, and they lose. That's going to happen. But at least they're trying. At least they're going through the proper positive process of winning football games in the modern NFL, in today's NFL, and moving forward in the NFL. There's still a lot of teams that play conservative, there's still a lot of teams that don't buy into the analytics. There's still a lot of teams and fans that don't buy into what the Chargers are doing. And it starts at the top. It starts with the head coach. And that head coach not only has to make the decision, but he also has to make his players believe that it is the right decision. Brandon Staley is where it all starts for me and why the Chargers are the future of the NFL. Brandon Staley is 38 years old. Meaning he's not even 40. 38 is before the 40th birthday, in case you didn't know. But that means he's young in the NFL's eyes. If you are even below the age of 40, if you are younger than the age of 40, that means you are very young in the NFL as a head coach. And that means you're going to have plenty of years to learn. And the crazy thing is, Brandon Staley at just 38 is already one of the elite coaches in the NFL 
not just because of his decisions, not just because he buys into the analytics, not just because he looks at a chart that says, go for it here, don't go for it there. The reason he's a great head coach is because he has all three traits. He does buy into the modern NFL. The way that football should be played in this era, Brandon Staley is absolutely perfect for that style of football. Reason number two, he has a great scheme defensively. He makes players better. Marginal players that are just okay, just maybe replacement level players, he makes those players better. Last year with the Rams, best defense in the NFL. This year, sure, the defense hasn't really added up statistically, but they've had some good game plans. They've played well, especially you look at that Chiefs game where I thought his game plan was very well executed. And I think he has a vision of football that not only is great on the offensive side of the ball, but also the defensive side of the ball all the way around. He believes in complementary football and he just simply believes in the right things. He has a full vision of a football team. A lot of times we see these head coaches, they're just a defensive guy. They're just an offensive guy. The thing I loved about Brandon Staley coming into Los Angeles, but also now seeing it on the field, seeing it unfold is that he has a full vision for this football team and it's being executed well only in his first year where he really hasn't had his fingers on exactly the personnel to pull off his schemes or necessarily the full vision of this team moving forward. That will come down the road. And number three, he is a great leader. We have seen numerous videos, numerous clips. If you are a Chargers fan, you've probably seen them, but I've seen plenty of mic'd up clips to know that Brandon Staley has the presence of a leader, the presence of a head coach. He's a huge reason for the success and a huge reason why I believe in this franchise moving forward. I would be a dummy to not mention Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, I believe for the next decade, will be a top three to five quarterback consistently in the NFL. You could throw out other names in the AFC even, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. Herbert is firmly in that top five within this conference, but also within the NFL, he will be a top 10 quarterback, an elite quarterback, if you look at the top 10 guys, maybe even just narrow it down to the top five, more often than he is not. So that gives you an opportunity every year to have a great baseline for your football team. Because when you have a truly special quarterback, you can get away with maybe not having the greatest third receiver or tight end or linebacker or free safety. Whatever it may be, it really upgrades that baseline. Trust me, I'm a Patriots fan. I know, I've seen a lot of bad defenses over the years, I've seen a lot of bad receiving cores, but Tom Brady, it hasn't mattered, okay? So with Justin Herbert, you're gonna see something similar. Not calling him Tom Brady, but the guy has a very bright future, and he should be one of the best quarterbacks in football moving forward. And we've seen him do it in multiple schemes with different coaching staffs already just in two years. He's also just incredibly accurate. He's got a great arm. He's got all the tools to be a great quarterback. And we've seen these things that I don't think are gonna get any worse. I believe Herbert's only gonna get any better, right? Justin Herbert is so great that even without great receivers, great running backs, great offensive lines, he'll be able to carry the load offensively. And with Brandon Staley being more so a defensive coach than an offensive mind, even if the defensive talent isn't up to snuff, he should be able to get at least an average unit on the field each and every year because of his intelligence. The main staples of a great franchise, that is the head coach and the quarterback. That's what you need to be a great team over a long course of time because other elements will shift, other players will change, wide receivers may leave and come and go, running backs may come and go, offensive linemen may get hurt, defensive players, one year you're gonna have a good defense, one year you're not gonna have a good defense. That just happens in the NFL. But as long as you have a great head coach and a great quarterback, you will be successful in the NFL. I truly undeniably believe that. But then you also have other elements to this football team that I really like. Rashawn Slater, your left tackle, was just drafted this year, first round. Absolute locked and loaded stud. He's the Tristan Wirfs of this year. He could be the best left tackle moving forward in the AFC. 
And I wouldn't be surprised. He's that talented. He's looked that good so far. Protecting Justin Herbert, that is absolutely what you need, a cornerstone of your franchise on offense. You have Corey Lindsley, who you signed at center. Not saying he's going to be there for the next 10 years. He's already 30, but he's signed long-term to be there for the next three to five years. So that's solid. Wide receivers, we'll see what happens with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Allen's getting a little bit older. Williams is becoming a free agent, but you'd maybe look to re-sign Mike Williams, who's having a breakout year in 2021. Austin Eckler is a running back. He's probably in his prime right now, so he's probably got a, another couple years. That's the most replaceable position, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. And defensively, you have two cornerstones that I love. Joey Boza, he's locked up as a pass rusher, an elite pass rusher for the next five to 10 years. And you have a safety who's a game changer and a chess piece, Derwin James, who's also very young. Both players are 25, 26 years old. So for the next four to seven years, they are going to be elite players as long as they stay healthy. That is awesome because you have cornerstones on offense, left tackle cornerback, maybe receiver. You have cornerstones on defense secondary player pass rusher in a passing league that is perfect this team is built for the future they've got all of the elements to dominate the next decade that's not even to mention guys like asante samuel jr who look to be bright young stars in this league at the cornerback position with the la chargers as well you have to consider something this team was always located in San Diego. And I love San Diego as a city. I think it is a beautiful city. But Los Angeles is a different market. It's a big market. And as good as the Rams have been, the Chargers may be that team that draws more attention. If they can continue the success, they may be the team that has LeBron James coming to their games on a consistent basis, that has the Hollywood A-listers coming to their games. And you know what that means? That means more primetime spotlight. That means, therefore, more moments for Justin Herbert to shine. And therefore, that gives an impact to who? Well, players in the free agency market because they're going to want to sign with the Chargers once they see them on Sunday Night Football and say, that team's really good. That quarterback's really good. I like that coach. He has some swagger. I'm going to sign with the Chargers. They're in LA. It's a beautiful place to be. You're always on TV. The stars are there. It's a great time. It is perfect for the Chargers to continue to dominate. It's almost the advantage that the Lakers have in basketball in a way. And the Chargers have a chance to continue that success with LA franchises. I could go on and on about this team. I really like the Chargers. I always have. But I think you are about to see the most successful run of Charger football you have ever seen yet. That is my prediction for the next decade. That Herbert and Staley will be the duo to dominate the AFC over the next 10 years. Not Mahomes and Reed, not McDermott and Allen, and of course not Brady and Belichick. It will be Herbert and Staley in the AFC, and maybe even the NFL. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. It's Mitch with the Bottom Line View. Thanks for watching. Gronk, spike that like button, and don't forget to subscribe.